Ahoy, you mate. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, how you doing out there? I've, I've won the prize this year, Larry. Doris gave me the... Silver Bowl no, Award. No, it's aluminum. Actually. The Aluminum Bowl <laughs> Award. Well... What did you do to win that, by the way? I haven't cussed anybody out all week. <laughs> <laughs> and that includes yours uh, truly. He's a much more... He, 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 and I attained, I got back to my regular weight today, so the doctor just will be thrilled. Now it's anymore. all just, just disappeared. Not anything at all left of him. He's just wasting away in well, Margaritaville. Oh, I wish. <laughs> I know. I used uh, to be with him when yes. he was wasting away in Margaritaville. But not anymore. Not anymore, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. That's the way it goes. Well, let's get the witch in here and see what we're doing. Get the witch. Whew. That was a pretty close. Uh, here. Thing there. Oh me, let's see what the witch has to say. Dear Doris. Hey, this one's to you, Doris. Doris is standing off camera over here. Where she has to make sure Larry does everything right. <laughs> She's watching me constantly. Could you get those two torps you work with to get back to their original premise and do a show with recipes that are cheap and easy? I'd particularly like something to do for a weeknight or when the weather is so bad you can't get out. Thanks, Terry Carden, Moose Jaw, Wisconsin. Wyoming. 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 Wisconsin. <laughs> I can never tell what those are. Uh, yeah, sure. Whatever you ask yes. for, that's what you're going to get. We, I've got a wonderful salad that I can't eat because it's got too much sugar in it that was sent in by Prentice McGuire of Parts Unknown. And I am going to do something called hamburger goulash. Sounds like something you wear. Uh -huh. uh, Debbie's hamburger goulash sent in by Deborah Smith of, is that Callens, Callens Virginia? Uh -huh. Where is that? Callens, me. Virginia. We need to get a weather map out here. And the very lovely Doris is coming in to do fruit salad, which she is wearing today. It's just No, I'm oh, doing the fruit, doing fruit salad, salad, as I just said. Which he is wearing today. <laughs> She's doing the what broccoli show is casserole. This? <laughs> I'm not sure that I even have the right program. <laughs> no, I'm, you're going to do broccoli casserole, casserole. Mm -hmm. sent in by Bobby Nixon of Richmond, Virginia. Good folks down there in Richmond, been watching a long time. Well, let me just say, I'll tell you All what right. I'm doing and then I don't need to do anything else for a little while. This hamburger goulash is, looks strange, but it's got to be okay because it's got a lot of good stuff in it. First thing I've done is taken a couple of pounds of hamburger and I'm browning it right now. And I started that before the show began because sometimes uh, this stove browns and sometimes it just browns out and it mm -hmm. doesn't do too much. So right now, that is just about where I need it to be. It's at the brown stage. Over here in pot number two, <laughs> we have a whole bunch of elbow macaroni. Maraki, uh, what's wrong with me? I can't, I can't talk today. Elbow macaroni. And you know, Mr. Macaroni invented uh, the radio. Yes. You're probably aware of that. The macaroni radio. So anyway, that is ready. That has been boiling for about eight to ten minutes, and I'm going to drain it and set it aside in accordance with the instructions. And now Mr. Johnson takes over. Well, I need to drain these cans of uh, fruit and set it aside. So uh, sounds like we're going to do a lot of draining and setting I, it, aside. It, it does, doesn't it? Do you need the drainer? No, yeah, I do. But that's the Doris is going to give you a bowl to put your Marconi in. Already. Und we shall. All and right, there you go. The drain is, is now ready. This fruit salad is one of those salads that uh, comes out of your pantry with a lot of canned stuff. And uh, it, it is fairly inexpensive, and it is a great salad for people that don't have any health problems. So there goes a can of fruit cocktail and a can of crushed pineapple. And these are the size cans that are closest to a pound, that size. They range from 15 to 16 ounces. And I found that you have to stir your colander a little bit to completely drain. Crazy on television today. Because these are, the pineapple is really juicy. And if you don't unplug the holes, the juice has nowhere to go. Oh, for heaven's sake. What's wrong? All I had to remember to do one thing at the beginning of the show, and that was to chop some onions and cook it in this hamburger. And I forgot to put the onions in. The oh. onions have been standing by, and onions don't do a thing when they're standing by. So I'm going to chop some, and I'll 
cook this hamburger just a little bit longer. I need to cut that back on and go back to it again. Big old onion, throw that in there. Also, your herbs and spices go in at this time. And the herbs and spices are uh, uh, bay leaf, salt and pepper to taste, quarter of a teaspoon of oregano, and uh, that's all for right now. And the onions, of course. So I'm going to do that and, and stick that in there too and fry it a little bit. Now, I'm going for a can of uh, coconut. I've got a lovely can of coconuts. Mm -hmm. who's, who's, who was that? Did that. Merv, that Merv Griffin. Griffin, back when he was a young, youngster. Or as my mother used to call him, Merle Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> Merle Griffith. That's funny. I'm uh -oh. putting oregano and Italian seasoning in this. A little salt and pepper and a bay leaf or two. How many bay leaves this thing got? One bay leaf. Now this is the killer in mine. Uh, any kind of salad that requires canned fruit, it's obligatory. You have to have miniature marshmallows. Oh, and it's no. a whole bag of them. A lot of marshmallows gave up their life for this show. You know, I had a real interesting conversation some time ago with my barber, Mr. Steve, about marshmallows. He wanted to know where they grew. <laughs> I thought and, they used to have a marshmallow tree out behind the studio back here. I and, definitely remember. But uh, let me tell you the funniest thing. Uh, <laughs> I got out uh, was Mr. several. Was Steve uh, hitting the? Well, was he hitting the sauce? Not or? really. Oh, too okay. bad. Yeah. No, but, he's just naturally yeah. goofy. But anyway, um, I looked up the recipe for marshmallows, and it's real interesting. What's in them? Sugar. Sugar. That's about all. Sugar. Well, now what makes it? Puffy and white. Oh, There's got to be know. something there was, in it. There was it some puffy. other stuff, but not much. But yeah. you, you had to cook them and then pour it in a pan and then cut them up into the marshmallow size. I've got a half a jar of maraschino cherries. And let me dump the rest of this juice out here so that I can put them. Now, I have a friend, Robert W. Ferguson, who tells me swears that he read somewhere that maraschino cherries will stay in your system for months and they're not good for you. Mm -hmm. Had you ever heard that? No, but you know, it's surprisingly enough, they only have one gram of sugar in it, is which is so? very, very low. All right, now I've got my can of coconut, my if fruit that's cocktail. True, if that's true, somewhere in the depths of me, there must be tons of maraschino cherries just, or just hanging out stems. somewhere. Or just the stems. <laughs> That's where right. you were trying to learn how to, uh -huh. to tie them with uh, my tongue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, All right. this smells so good with those Italian seasonings and the oregano in there. Mm. Oh, I know. Basil. I wish it, you yeah, hadn't put oregano. it in my fruit salad. Oregano. Though. Do what? I say I just wish you hadn't put them in my oregano. <laughs> I mean in my fruit salad. Oh, me. All right. Now you stir all that. Now the fresh fruit goes in. And we go over here Ooh. to these lovely Fuji apples, which are normally too expensive to use. However, uh, they were on sale and cheaper than the regular apples. Well, isn't that a lovely presentation? What, what, yeah. you, what you did with the apple there. Uh -huh. I have bought those things down through the years and they work about two times and they bend all the pieces and they don't work anymore. Well, that's because you're so violent with them. Oh. But probably because I buy cheap ones. Now this is going to take me about the half of the rest of the time. Oh, good. Just to chop up all these apples. Perhaps we should watch. And maybe we should have the Cook Sisters come there's in. There's enough citric acid in this mixture that the apples don't brown out. We want to have the Cook Sisters. Yeah, come we in? could do that. Yeah, let's do that while I'm waiting for the hamburger to brown just a wee bit more <clears throat> with all the herbs and spices. Here they are. Coming out in the hall right now. What you drinking? Water. Sis? Water. Mm -hmm. Water. I'll bet. Oh, it's real tasty. It's got a real good flavor to it and not much color in it. Mm, looks right blue. It matches the dress, mm -hmm. too. You know, when you're thin slicing meat, sometimes it's tough to slice it real thin. Oh, it's so hard. It just squishes around and you can't get hold to it right. It's sometimes it's best to freeze it before you 
slices. Oh, well, that's a smart thing. Then you can cut it real thin. I'm oh. Tootsie Cook. And, and I'm Sister Cook. And, and we're, we're the, the Cook, Cook sisters. sisters. Very good. I have just drained some uh, mushroom pieces and stems. You know, pieces and stems are a little bit cheaper than regular uh -huh. mushrooms. You can save some money, actually, by buying them. And sometimes, even when I have a recipe that calls for regular mushrooms, if I'm real lazy and want the ones that are prepackaged, uh -huh. I'll buy them because they're a little cheaper. And once they get into the food, it doesn't matter too much. Anyway, you can't tell the difference. Right. So anyway, what are you doing, John? So you still oh, working I'm on still where I'm going to do another apple if you missed it the first time. Okay. Okay, the next thing I have to do now is drain any grease from the burger. Well, there actually is none. I think I've cooked it so long it has nothing left to it anymore well, whatsoever. it looked to me like you had that high-priced hamburger. I did have high-priced hamburger. I bought some decent stuff. I'm tired of getting low-down stuff. Now, to this, I have to add tomato paste. It says a big can. That just seems like an awful lot of tomato paste to me. Doesn't it to you, Doris? It says a big can. I don't know. I think a little bit of tomato paste goes like I'm going to use a big old blob of it. And then uh, also to that we have to add uh, some uh, chopped tomatoes. And I, that's more than chopped, I'll tell you. Those are crushed. They're not even chopped. I couldn't find any chopped. I had everything but. And we're also going to add mushroom pieces at this point. And we're going to mix all this up on top of the stove before we put it into our cooking uh, plate or device. I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to turn that off. It doesn't need to cook anymore whatsoever. And I'll be adding the cheese in a minute. That's correct. Uh, thank you, Doris, for reminding me. <laughs> She's so nervous I'm going to miss something. And why shouldn't she be? I've missed so many things down through the years. Isn't that right, Johnson? Mm -hmm. So I'm, make sure I'm just you sitting here thinking. About <laughs> I know I could just see your mind just moving slowly. But anyway, put that all in there and mix it around pretty good. Now I have some fine sharp cheddar over here, and I'm gonna spend the rest of the program probably mutilating it and doing something with it. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that right now, and that's the last thing that goes in. Mm. Mmm, mighty fine, mighty fine. This is good. Besides the macaroni, of course. <laughs> I almost forgot the macaroni. I set the macaroni aside. It's been setting aside such a long time. You know, it's a shame that Larry's body and his brain can't go on vacation <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> That's just really pathetic. I set the things. You know, I remember that time a couple of years ago. I had a, a deck party at home. And the next morning when I got up and came down, I opened the oven to get something and there was half the food that had been prepared and put in the oven that had never actually been used at all. Well, it's a sad thing. How much of this goes in here? One and a half cups cubed. Is that what it says, really? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I have more than one and a half cups and I love cheese so much, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that and put it on top because I think it'll look real pretty. And then I'll just cube and the rest of it. And nobody will ever get to see it. In accordance with the directions, oh. we will cube the rest of it. Is, are those large cubes or small cubes? Can you tell I haven't seen this recipe before <laughs> I came into the studio today? I looked at it the other day and I said, well, that's easy enough. Well, I'll just buy the stuff and do it on camera, live. That's what makes the program so exhilarating, ladies and uh gentlemen. -huh. The fact that we're willing to take chances to push the envelope. Well, let me tell you, you take a chance <laughs> just coming in here some days. Well, I'm not going to make real big cubes because it only has to cook for two minutes after it goes in a microwave, huh? What? Probably won't melt. Well, thank you for having me cube it. You're the one that suggested this. I was going to do it up real nice so that it this would dissolve. This is his Picasso casserole. <laughs> My cubist uh -huh. casserole. All right, uh, now I put in two apples and now I'm putting in two bananas. Two by two. Mm -hmm. Well, this seems to me like it's it. a mighty sweet, mucky mess that what, you're doing. This, it, well, it is. I'll tell you what's a fact. We'll go over our recipes here in a couple of minutes, but I'm so busy cubing this uh, stuff. Well, now. I'm going <clears> to <throat> slice these It's just very difficult nanners. to cube and talk at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, this goes in there, right? We actually put it. 
Well, I'll heat it again a little bit. It looks like we have about 20 to 30 more minutes left. I think we probably can do that. I'm going to heat this stuff just a little more and see if we can't melt it down a little bit. And then I'm saving this for on top. Looks kind of cheesy to me. It really does look cheesy, doesn't it? The whole show is sort of cheesy, uh -huh. if you ask me. But nobody did, so I'll let it go. I'm going to give my recipe now, simply because I'm at the point where I can't do anything else. Does this go on top of the macaroni? Help no, me, Doris. That goes in there too? Mm -hmm. Oh, for heaven's sake. Uh, Debbie's hamburger goulash. Two pounds of hamburger, as lean as you can afford. And that's what I did. It wasn't really terribly expensive. Large can of tomato paste. I don't know what that means. One and a half cup of cubed sharp cheddar cheese. Quarter teaspoon of oregano. Quarter teaspoon of Italian seasoning. A small can of chopped tomatoes drained. Optional. Large onion chopped. Half a cup of uncooked elbow macaroni. I've already cooked it because on the air we don't have much time. If Sometimes if it's not cooked when we bring it in here we're going to eat it raw. So I went on ahead and cooked it, but you can use uncooked because of the way it, it's a good while on the stove. Medium can of mushroom pieces, bay leaf, salt and pepper to taste. Yeah, I, I've noticed you've gotten a bigger bowl now. And I uh, so too. on the fruit salad from Prentice McGuire, you need a can of crushed pineapple, a can of fruit cocktail, a small can of canned coconut, uh, a package of miniature marshmallows, a half a jar of maraschino cherries, and if you look, you'll find that they have them chopped now. And uh, two to three large apples and two, two bananas. And you also need some mayonnaise. Let's get Doris in here so she can talk about hers mm -hmm. and tell us what's in hers while I'm melting these enormous cubes that she has forced me to do here on the air. We'll be eating those whole here in a couple of minutes. Excuse me, Doris, I have to get the Doris phone, the Doris microphone. Hey, Audi. Hi. Uh, okay. Uh, I had to make a broccoli uh, casserole, so uh, it, this is a pretty nice dinner, really, when you have the meat, the, the, your vegetable, and your dessert here. You came up pretty good this time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I, you, with mine, you took two packages of frozen chopped broccoli thawed, a third a cup of onion chopped fine, one egg beaten, two third cup mayonnaise, one cup sharp cheddar cheese, one can cream of celery soup undiluted, two rounds of cracker crumbs crushed fine, and one and a half sticks butter melted. And uh, you mix it all together. You, you, you mix all the vegetables and stuff together, and then take the cracker crumbs, put it on the top of it and then drizzle them one and a half sticks of, more of, of um, butter on it. And that is what it looks like. Ooh, it it looks like it's it'll beautiful. Be pretty good. It's, um, I made it earlier, and when I got it out of this stove, of course, it was a, had a crunchy top on it, because that was a couple of hours ago. And it, and it might not even be warm now. But I think it'll be pretty good. It looks beautiful. So. It really does. Thank you, Doris. It's an awful lot of butter. Well, Smartly done. <laughs> it is. You got some more stuff to go in yours over there? Yeah, I'm, I've got about three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise, and you put that in with it and stir it all together, and then it has to cure uh, overnight or for at least half a day. So if you're going to serve this at dinner time, you need to make it right after breakfast. Okay, I have to add my macaroni, which I almost forgot which is now turned into a gigantic glob. Just a huge lump of macaroni. There it is, isn't that attractive? Well, we'll beat it down in there. And you've got to mix all this together and we're gonna put it in a casserole dish, dish and we're gonna nuke it for two minutes. And so that's the next thing I have to do and believe it or not, the cheese isn't melting. <laughs> But it will well, it's, when we knew. It's sharp cheese is a hard yeah. cheese and doesn't melt as well as the okay. softer cheese. I'm going to too. take this now and put it in a casserole dish. Good heavens, it makes enough for Coxie's army. Look at that. I believe we could feed hundreds of people. Well, if they know it's back here, there will be that many up here. to. And of course, because I was very clever, I have purposely uh, came up with a little cheese for on top. <laughs> Well, I think it's a nice touch, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm going to put it in a microwave oven for two minutes. Go ahead, Laban. Well, this salad, I, it's good to start out in a big bowl. This is the hint from Laban and Larry's test kitchen. 
uh, start out in a big bowl, but it will uh, compress as you stir it and the marshmallows kind of melt a little bit into a much more tractable thing. And that's what it looks like. And let me get the real one out the refrigerator. Caught me back here messing around at the sink. Oh. Here we go. And this is what it looks like when it's Well, Laban, it looks pretty much uh, like, like the other it one. It does. <laughs> Virtually identical. <laughs> So that's what the fruit salad looks like. Well, that is real pretty. There's no two ways about it. Have we done everything now that we're supposed we, to we, do? I believe so. Perhaps we should wash the dishes. We've never done oh, that on the air before. And we haven't done it off air either. And we're not going yes, to start. We're not about to start after all these years. We're mm -hmm. no fools. Well, I'm counting down the final minute and five seconds of uh, my recipe. Oh. I am. I, well, I can't really you know, do anything. You know, you said something a while ago that I, I agree with. I don't cook in my microwave. I reheat a lot of stuff or heat, you know, a frozen TV dinner. Yep. Yes, I have been known to eat one that wasn't too bad for you. And, uh, that I, you know, th there are people that go to a lot of trouble to cook in them. They could, you know, like baking a cake, which and, won't and some, brown. Yeah, and, and sometimes the preparation time to do it that way is almost as as long as, as it is to stick it in the oven. Besides, once you get by the prep time, what's it matter if you have to wait a half hour or an hour for it to cook well, in the yeah. oven anyway? What's it matter? Go ahead and prop your feet up. Watch cooking sheet. Do something worthwhile. Yes, but, at least. Uh, <clears throat> you, you, Doris said she doesn't cook in hers very often either, do you? She eats up, the up cat. cat food. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but is you, do you have a cat? Three. Oh, three you got cats. three, and she's got how many dogs? Three. Five or six. Doris won't be with us next time. Oh, don't say Doris, that. Doris, no, I'm sorry to won't, hear that. She oh, won't be oh. here. She and Harold are, are going to go to Paris, France, Europe. Are you kidding? No, they're they're leaving tomorrow. Well, nobody said anything to me about it. Nobody invited me. No one asked me to come to the airport and kiss them goodbye. And don't forget. And look at this. Isn't this pretty? That's uh, two minutes nuked uh, at full speed, 100%. And there it is. I happen to think that all that cheese on top makes it look right lovely. I want to know something. Yeah. All right. Now, she and Harold are leaving tomorrow to go to Paris. Mm -hmm. Andre you know, who usually runs this camera right up here. Yeah. Uh, and his mama are in Germany. Mm -hmm. This is Andre right up here. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so they're in Germany. How is it that all these staff people around here can travel to the well, foreign fields and leave us here to suffer to at like home? Sounds to me like people are making too much money. Could be. Okay, we'll have... let's head over to the table. Let me see if I can get around with that Mabel. over. This turned out beautiful, but I tell you, oh, it really is enough to feed 500 people. 500 hungry people, I might add. Let me give you some of this. I know how much yeah. you like cheese, so you'll have to like this dish. Even if you hated it, you'd have to like it. That's oh, yours. That's you. There you go. Well, that little crumbly thing uh, that Doris did certainly looks lovely. It smells great, too, I might add. Well, this is sort of stringy, but all the stuff did melt. I'm happy to, <laughs> I'm happy to say thank you for giving me that. I, and Doris is right. We really actually do have a, a real nice little uh, ensemble uh, dish here. Real lovely. A little bit of everything. We've got a vegetable and the meat and pasta, and then we've got uh, Laban's deadly dessert. So. I'm going to try this casserole first. The, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, yours, your... Hamburger goulash. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. You've got a nice little light Italian flavor to it. I think that perhaps this could have used just maybe a wee bit, a little more herbs and spices. Mm. I probably increased it. Oh, Doris, you have just come up with the topper of the day. That, that is a wonderful recipe. I love this. Mm, isn't that white and beautiful? Mm -hmm. Of course, it's also got six million calories because of all that butter in there. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to try Mr. Laban's thing here. Oh, it's too bad that we couldn't have more sugar. Mm. 
I mean, I I will test my blood it when I good. get home and see how high my sugar is. <laughs> but it's really from good. One spoonful. Mm. It's amazing. How could it not be? They're all three delicious. Bye.